I'm having this like image. You, know, you go through seasons in life, yeah. right? There are seasons when you feel like you're on top of it and you're doing everything that you ought to be doing. And there are seasons when you aren't. And that's the same in the spiritual life. You know, sometimes you're, you're doing good, but sometimes you fall, you slip, and you've got to get back on the horse. And there's ways to do that, right? Repentance, going to confession, right? Resuming practices, devotions, getting back into the scriptures, getting back to mass. So there's seasons. The image that I like to use is, and, and you mentioned, right, you go to mass on Sunday. Okay, great. Like you and I. You like to work out when you're healthy. You haven't, have, you haven't been able to work out like you normally like to work out. There's two types of people that work out. There's the one who goes to the gym and they go to the gym and then they carry the gym with them when they leave. And so when they're not in the gym, they know what they're eating. They know how they're moving throughout the day. They're wanting to stay active. They're, they're taking care of their body outside of whatever time they're spending in the gym because they know they want to get back in the gym and be able to perform and to be healthy and to do all those things that come with right having health. But there's other people that would go to the gym, but they don't take it with them. They go and they use the gym as an excuse, as a justification for indulging. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I went to the gym. Today. I got my 10,000 steps in. I'm going to eat this. Or I, I, I went to the gym. I can afford to be slack or relaxed here. They don't use that time in the gym throughout the rest of the day or the rest of the week. It's, it's the same thing for, for Catholics. If you go to church on Sunday, you can expect God to act, and you're going to be different if you carry Sunday throughout the week. So, like, what are you doing outside of that one hour? How are you keeping that one hour alive? And if you're going to mass more throughout the week, that's great. What are you doing to keep it alive? If you're, if you're just going to go about life as usual and you're not going to self-reflect, you're not going to repent, you're not going to align your, your habits and your actions more closely to God, if you're not going to do that and you're just going to say, well, I'm a good Catholic, like what do I need to go to confession for? I didn't kill anybody. I'm not cheating on my wife. I'm not doing, I'm not, I'm, 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 a, I'm a good person. I go to church on Sunday. Well, you're using Sunday to justify your behaviors and it's kind of keeping you in this comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And when you're in that comfort zone where you're not willing to be challenged, yeah. right, to grow in holiness, because that's what God wants for all of us, then he, the expectation for God to act is diminished. Yeah. The, the reality that we can be different is diminished. So how do you carry Sunday yeah. throughout the week? That's the hard thing. And Monsignor Shea talked a lot about it with that. I know Father Mike has touched on it, like, what he calls Christian Smith, I believe, is the one who came up with it from the University of Notre Dame. Is that it's a moralistic, therapeutic deism. It's it's like a it's a practical Christianity. It isn't a personal relationship with God. It's putting him in a box. I'm not I'm not uh, killing people. I'm pretty good. But it's not like he's not expecting him to actively be involved. It's like oh, I'm pretty much moral. You know, moral means hey, I, you know, I'm pretty much a good person. Yeah. Therapeutic is like okay, when I need him, he's there. I you know he, I can you know I I can just ask him for this and this and that, but he isn't part of my everyday life. And deism means like, that's what a lot of the founding fathers believe. Deism is like the, the God. It's an undefined clock. belief in God. Yeah. It's like he, he, yeah. he exists. He started a clock and he wound it up and, and it's going, but he doesn't want to intervene. Not in my life for sure. So too many of us, we live in this practical atheism and it's people who go to mass every Sunday. It's like, but there's so much more. And when you go to a conference like this, you see there is another option. Like God wants us to be fully alive. And if we just have this fire insurance type of faith, like, well, I don't want to go to hell. I'm going to do the bare minimum. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to check the boxes. I'm going to, I'm going to keep God here because I'm worried about what he's going to do in my life or what he may be calling me to give up. Most of the time, it's those things that he wants us to give up, which they're not good for us. But it's hard because it's like we think that's who we are. Or like that's, you know. Well, it's it's that. And I think for a lot of people, they keep God in the box, not because they're worried about what he's going to do in their life. They just don't give him the time of day. Yeah. Right? They do the things that they think they should be doing, but they don't have any expectations outside of that. Yeah. God's just not going to make an impact in my work situation. God's not going to make an impact in my finances. God's not going to make an impact in my relationship with my wife. God's not going to change how I relate to my kids. God's not going to fill in the blank. There's just no expectation placed on God. Yeah. And so, but when you have, that's that deism. Deism is a belief that there is a, a deity. Yeah. There is a God, but he it's just not, doesn't personally care about it's me. Not yeah, it's there is no relationship there. Yeah. And so that's what we have to kind of migrate away from because 
we know that God not just want, not only wants to have a personal relationship with us, but he became a person so that he can relate to us in ways that we can't even begin to understand. And he right? wants to love us so intimately that he gave us his own body and blood to commune with him in that way. And that's yeah. what this conference was all about is getting that back that, you know, we've talked about that in this, the sacrifice and the, the meal and the, and, and the, the real presence, like that's what this was all about. But if he just stays on the altar or he's just in, in me for 15 minutes and I don't do anything else, that fire that's within me, Father Mike also said is that it's not because people don't have enough information. Like we're the too much information. It's like, we don't have enough love. Like that love, are we letting that transfer into our lives to change it, to love other people? I can't give what I don't have. So it's like, not that I, I don't need to read more books to be a better Christian. Like I've read plenty of books about Jesus. I don't have to watch any more YouTube videos. I have to love, I have to love more. And the only way to do that is to spend more time in adoration, in mass, in his word, praying, being in that dialogue with God throughout the day. That's, I need more of his life coming through me, not me trying to figure it out myself. That's part of that, that deism is that if I just watch this YouTube video yeah. and I can lay out this perfect way to start my day, if I do this thing and if I walk and I do all these things that this guru said, or my life will be great instead of relying that, no, that's not the answer. The answer isn't something I can do. It's something that Jesus can do through me. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do. That's what this practical atheism is Christianity. It's like, I'm trying to, to come up with some plan to, to, to be like, no, I need to let go of those expectations. What I get excited by, and we have to be careful what we pray for. Yeah. And I mean that in a, in a yes. positive way. Yes. You knock on God's door. He always answers. I love that question that Brayden asked, like, why are some prayers answered? Why, why are others not answered? Every prayer is heard. And so you got to be careful what you're praying for. And right now we're praying for revival, specifically in devotion to the Eucharist. But it's a revival that extends beyond that. And so if God's going to pour out his spirit, which he wants to do, what are we doing to get ready? So last night, while you guys were at an Indy, we had our leadership summit here at the parish. Oh yeah. And so we had all of our parish leaders come out. It's an evening formation for them. And in preparing to kind of give a reflection to our leaders here at the parish, um, it struck me, we've got 50,000 Catholics plus that are earnestly praying around our Lord for a revival to take place in our country. What are we doing to get ready? What are we doing to step out of our comfort zone and to step into the mission that we've all been entrusted with. And that's going to take an outpouring of the Spirit. Yes, we need more love, but we need to be open to this relationship with the Spirit, which I would say most Catholics, because I'm guilty of it myself, we're not familiar with. And we it mentioned it's foreign. Yeah, it's, it's foreign to us. It's just not, it's so much easier to have a relationship with Jesus because he's a person. You can, there's stories about him. He actually walked among us. Um, there's, there's, he's in entertainment. You could watch stuff like The Chosen. Like he's, he, he has a face. He's appeared to saints. Like he, it's so much easier to have a relationship with Jesus. But Jesus, we've talked about this. It's better for him to leave so that the spirit could come. And it's that period that we live in, we need to become vessels of the Holy Spirit. And that's only going to happen if we have a relationship with him. And so what does that look like? Are we calling down the Spirit in our personal prayer? Are we allowing the Spirit to permeate our heart? Because right, St. Paul tells us the Spirit is the one that searches hearts. The Spirit is the one that prays for us when we don't know how to pray. The Spirit is the one that not only gives us fruits and gifts— right? The graces that God wants us to have, but he's the one that helps us discern what those gifts are. And so do we have that relationship with the spirit? If not, start, like start praying for the Holy Spirit to reveal himself to you. Start praying for the Holy Spirit to reveal yourself to yourself. Start praying that the Holy Spirit can reveal what is Christ, what does the Father want from me in order to make this revival happen? Because it's not going to happen if there aren't disciples to go out and do the work. Right? Or else it's like what Father Mike said. It's going to be a great experience. It's, a holy it's huddle. It's going to be a summit thing, a holy huddle. And then we're going to break. We're going to just go back to where we came from. But if we pray for the Spirit to come, He needs people who are going to be disciples. He needs people who are going to go out and do the work of discipleship. 